Safety is everyone's responsibility. No, it's not. What? Safety <laughs> is your responsibility. No one can be safe for you. You should not enter a cave at any time without an adult or a cave tour guide. The decisions that you make for you and your family are up to you. No one can decide what is right for you. No one can decide what's the best plan of action for your life. If you're afraid to do something, do not be bullied into doing it. On the other hand, if you're not afraid, it's okay to be courageous. There is no one that can decide the amount of risk that you want to take. Because risk is personal. There are some things we do that are dangerous, and we do our best to mitigate the dangers. But at the end of the day, you have to decide what's right for you. And at the end of the day, no one is going to look out for you as much as you are going to look out for you. You're the one who's going to have to decide exactly how you want to proceed. We have sorted out the dangers and made it where we know what's around the corner, we know if it's dangerous or not, before actually videoing for, like, pulling in the rat hole. For example, go down through here. It's a straight edge, but it's not vertical for very long. For example, you slide down and it goes back flat. So if you get stuck in here, which you won't, you can just crawl right back out. The danger would be if we didn't know what was here. Caves can be very dark. That's why it's recommended that you always carry a light. What's recommended is that you carry multiple lights. For example, two is the recommended amount, but we carry it from 10 to 20. And enough batteries, get this, enough batteries to last us many weeks. One of the coolest things you could do with a lot of lights is to see how bright you could make a cave. One of the things you have to consider when you go on any kind of outdoor activity is how much food and water you bring. Now, in a cave, it really depends on the size of the cave. If I know I'm only going to be there for a couple hours, then I usually don't take much food with me. While you might get hungry if you got stuck in a cave for a while, or you got lost, or you're spending a long time in there, you're definitely going to get thirsty. I don't recommend drinking cave water, but this technically isn't cave water. They suspect that this cave formed on top of a spring. And so the spring had already created some erosional caves, then the lava poured through and made this elaborate labyrinth maze cave. But the water's drinkable. I'm gonna drink this just to show you guys. For real, right at a fast moving spot. Dude, it's cold. <laughs> it's so cold. Feels like a frosty, huh? Oh, yeah. You can feel the ice going down. Ooh, yeah. Let's talk about air quality in a cave. Air quality in a cave is not as nice as it is outside. Air quality in a cave can become a little bit stagnant depending on the kind of cave and how many exits and entrances there are. This cave has multiple exits. They are small and they are far apart, but it's enough to draft the air through, so the oxygen is fine. And in most caves, the oxygen level is fine. However, the walls get mildewy. You know, I hesitate to use the word mold, but there, there is mildew. There are bats, and so bats produce bat poo. This is not the best air to breathe all day long. I've gotten a sore throat before. That's probably the most that would happen in this type of cave. So we wear masks sometimes. Some people like to wear more thorough masks. In general, the oxygen's fine. It's not a big concern. But I would say carry a mask. Just the cold air sometimes will get to you after a while. Cold, damp air, you don't want to breathe that forever. In the summer, caves are a lot drier. In the winter, it's just raining down through, it's guano, it's mildew, it's mold, it's disgusting. So I could see why some people don't like it, but for the most part, the oxygen is okay. Right. Most of the time, a creek runs through here, and there's not much water, so we try to get where you can see the water. In the winter time, what happens in here? probably up against the ceiling and we would probably be fully submerged. This passage floods out. This is the entrance to the cave. 
One of the real cave dangers is flooding. There are, it happens time and time again where people will go into a cave, the water will rise, and then they can't get out. People have died that way. In, th in this case, there's another I exit, but that other exit is a tight squeeze. If you're a bigger person, you got in this cave and rain could come down, the water could rise, and you could get pinned in this cave. So check the weather. If there is a hard rain in the forecast and the entrance has water in it, you need to be mindful that that water can turn into a sump, fill up past the entrance. That's why going with a few people is good. You can help, Jacob can help me make smart decisions. I can help him make smart decisions, decide, hey, do we want to go in here? Are we hungry? Do we have enough water? Is it going to rain outside? So you do have to be mindful of flooding. We've come through here when it was almost full of water before. Not to worry for us, we can get out a different way. But in here, this entrance actually floods and can trap people. So you can see here we're at a crossroads and there's a passage right over here on this side and there's a passage right here. Now if you come to a fork in the road in a cave and you don't know which way to take, there is multiple ways to keep your direction. You've seen us in one of our videos use string to keep your direction. Using string is a bad idea and it's not recommended for a number of reasons. If you have to use string, you're probably already in trouble. Uh, we used string before when we didn't know this cave, but the fact of the matter is, we've become better cavers and we don't recommend it because it just makes a mess. And now we're here to clean up the string. Whoever was here before us used this tape. We don't recommend this tape unless you're gonna go back out the way you came so you can take it with you because it's technically littering. We use rock stacks. So when we come to a fork in the road, We'll go down this passage. You can put a rock stack here so that when you come back, you know that rock stack is the way back. We put the rock stack in the direction of the exit. You put the rock stack in the way home. We have used little orange cones before. We've used Nerf guns before. I use Nerf bullets because they have an orange tip and I can put them pointing the direction home. You want to indicate the direction of the exit. So if it forks, if it forks again, if it forks again, you want to continue to mark the direction of the exit so that when you turn around, no matter how elaborate it is, you follow out clearly a human-made rock stack. When you come back through, you'd know this is the way home. And it's just done with rocks. And so you see fun little rock stacks. This cave already has a lot of them. In fact, this cave has so many, you might need to find a new way because rock stacks are now like, which rock stack is my rock stack? So... There's that way, this way, these two ways, and that way. Now, the tag is here to show which way to go. One of our viewers mentioned maybe using a lighter to identify which way the flow of the cave was drafting so that you can find your way out. Because that's cool, we're not gonna get lost, but what if you did get lost? Could this find the way out? And you know what we noticed? There's a draft in the tunnel here. It goes to the back of the cave. Yeah, you can also see with your breath because it's cold. So if a cave is freezing, there is a draft. So the draft would indicate in here how to get to the back of the cave, I think. We at least know that we're in the correct passage. Really, the biggest danger in cave isn't the specific dangers. It's the compound dangers. It's that a cave is always dark. Most of these lava tubes are always cold. The floor is generally unstable. It's full of bouldering rocks. There is dangers from all sides from above. I, I hike and there are cliffs which you could fall on. But in a cave, there's also high spots and there's also places rocks could tumble down. The ground can be slippery. The ground can be icy. The biggest thing is you have no one to call for help. So when you're in a cave, you have all these elements of danger. Before we film something, we investigate it. We don't just film jumping down a hole or a passage. We take a look and we are very careful of the passages we take so that we don't get lost. Then maybe we try climbing down it. Then maybe we try going head first. And once we're really comfortable, then we get out the cameras so that we can film ourselves. And so that way, what we do looks cool and safe for our videos. And when Jacob's here, it looks handsome. You have to be aware that once you go in a cave or once you go on a hike, that you lose cell reception, that you lose your connection with the outside world. And so you need to tell somebody where you're going and you need to give them the coordinates and then you need to stick with your plan. Put your foot on my shoulder here. I'm putting my knees on you. Fine. Stand up. It's a lot easier when you stand. You're not trusting my shoulders. 
You don't have options. I think it does. Come on, talk me through it now. All right, I'm trying to fit through this passage, which was an overhang. Now we know it connects. Although I think we could split it from a different way. Kind of big right Talk to me about what you're doing. Crawling, 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 crawling. I'm squishing through a small passage. Where do you feel the pinch at? My butt. Yeah, I feel like on the on, Talk to me about your stomach rolling across those rocks. Talk to me. Um, this is really uncomfortable. I know. I can't even turn my head. Tell me about your stomach. Um, it's covered in spiky move, boys. Move and explain. Um, it's covered in spiky boys and stuff that really hurts. One of the dangers is, uh, is rocks falling from above is all the time on these ceilings, they come raining down. And so you got to look out for that. It doesn't happen often. Oh, thank goodness. Jacob's pushed out of another room. <laughs> you need a Lego figure in there. <laughs> There's a little rock stick in here. Look at this little guy. He's just a little fella. <laughs> Yo, it's so tiny. So check it out, guys. Jacob's pushing out another little room. Yeah, just hang on, buddy. We'll get you. It's pretty tight. Pretty tight in there. See if we can get him out. Very easy to get confused in a cave or out in the woods, and so you need. Oh, I'm gonna throw up. Oh. oh.